Hi there everybody, Nikki here. As of yesterday, I uh, just completed a 14 day juice cleanse. And what I thought I'd do is just record a short video, uh, just sharing with anybody who's interested certain reflections and experiences that I made and had during the cleanse. And I hope to um, actually focus my discussion on the healing and spiritual growth aspect that a juice cleanse may be able to assist us with. Um, so that's what I'm going to be focusing on. And when I am talking about a healing and spiritual growth uh, focus, I'm going to be looking at um, or discussing uh, how it can happen on a permanent basis. So not just a temporary Thing that we observe during a cleanse itself or for a few weeks afterwards um, kind of want to be talking more about it from a permanent uh, perspective because I feel that's probably one of the main reasons why people do a juice cleanse in the first place they want to see some kind of change or permanent change you know in, in, in themselves so I'm going to be focusing on that if you are um, wanting to find out more about what a juice cleanse is or various juice cleanse recipes, this video would not be suit suitable for your intention. So I would recommend that you go elsewhere to find out more information about that because that's not what I'm gonna be discussing. If you are unsure of where to go, um, I do have a very good friend of mine. Uh, her name is Courtney Paul. And she actually works off donation by offering a uh, juice uh, cleansing coaching service to uh, whoever is interested in following the juice cleanse and receiving uh, advice about going through that process. And Courtney as well, um, she um, speaks about things that I also believe to be true. So that is the reason why I am vouching for, for Courtney. So if you would like to uh, find out more information um, about all of that stuff, I'll put a link in the description box below the video to Courtney's website. Also in this video, I'm going to be making reference to a number of principles and also um, laws of God that Jesus and Mary Magdalene teach. I've been following the teachings of divine truth, which they both teach for almost four years as well. And so I'm going to be making references to a number of uh, those aspects during this talk. If you, um, you know, don't know anything about Jesus or Mary and you're like, what? Um, then I'll put a link as well to their website and also their YouTube channel if you'd like to find out more information there as well. So very quickly, uh, just to give all of you uh, an idea and um, into the context of the video and where I'm coming from, I've been a vegan for three and a half years now. And the I actually initially uh, did a juice cleanse um, maybe about eight or nine months ago for five days. So I've got experience with doing uh, a juice cleanse and uh, this recent idea to do a juice cleanse, um, a 14 day one, uh, came about uh, predominantly from my girlfriend. She uh, was interested in doing one and initially I wasn't too keen, um, but then I thought, you know, it is healthy, it's good for, you know, your body and um, it would be interesting, you know, I, I would be uh, intrigued to find out more uh, and draw more uh, conclusions about the process of uh, doing a juice cleanse and how that can maybe help us uh, heal. So uh, that's why I went along as well and uh, chose to do it too. So going into the juice cleanse itself, I had uh, two primary intentions really. The first intention was going into the juice cleanse in the hope that it may uncover or unlock some emotions that I have stored within my own soul, in my heart. Um, so I was kind of going in, in the hope that, you know, certain things would happen inside of my heart where I would then be able to experience the, the emotion, whatever it may be, um, in the hope to kind of release that emotion from my soul and to, and to heal. 
so that was the primary intention and the second one as well if i'm being honest it was to just see what may occur in my physical body on a physical level during the actual juice cleanse itself so they were the two primary intentions and i guess the first um the first question is well what was the cleanse like how did it go how did it make me feel and um if i'm being honest with you with you all um i was kind of expecting the juice cleanse to do more for me physically than i thought it would than i thought it actually did um ultimately um you know i've read i've watched a lot of videos on youtube with people talking about how much uh the juice cleanse uh did things for them physically and um you know gave them more energy and you know all of these tons of different uh things that other people have found um however for me i was kind of a bit like oh okay not really too much has changed for me you know like a lot of people say that your skin gets a lot better and it glows more and all of this stuff where whereas i didn't find that um in the 14 days that i did one um yes a lot of people say that you can lose weight and it's an effective way of losing weight and i agree um i did find that to be the case i lost about seven or eight kilograms during the 14 days um so you know if people go into a juice cleanse with the intention to lose weight then it you know you probably will lose um weight um just because of the nature of it itself um but as i said my intention wasn't really to lose weight or to um look differently physically it was more to um have the intention to get into some um unhealed emotional issues that i have in my heart but yeah in in general um during the cleanse itself i didn't feel particularly full of energy or not full of energy i felt the same really um you know my body did feel uh, lighter um as the cleanse went on and that was because i was losing a lot quite a bit of weight um and one thing that i did find was um i did feel a bit clearer inside my own mind um and my own thought process and things like that it was it was a bit clearer and um also yes my body did release some uh, old uh, old waste that was stored in it over i don't know how many years or months um you know that did happen um but yeah i mean going into the cleanse i would have considered myself being just a normal weight uh, pretty healthy had a good diet you know i was i'm already vegan so i had i've always had a lot of fruit and veg and salads and i've always had a pretty good diet really um so you know in that respect you know not too much happened as you may imagine in comparison with somebody let's say for example who um you know drunk alcohol for 20 30 years or someone who um you know became overweight over x amount of years and did a juice cleanse i'm sure that um people coming at it from that side of things would have experienced quite drastic changes in their physical body um and that has been documented to be true in a lot of videos and good for you, for your body um but yeah from from my perspective not much really changed one of the things that i've been finding through listening to the teachings of divine truth uh, from Jesus and Mary they they actually share that real healing occurs when we experience these emotions that have been stored in us usually from our childhood where people have caused us pain or caused us damage and we carry those wounds and scars into our adult life and if we don't do something about these emotional uh, injuries that we have in our hearts uh, the injuries will a- uh, actually govern how we uh, interact in our day-to-day lives what happens in our lives um, you know what we end up doing as a profession or the types of friends we have it governs everything really one thing that i found is that 
with uh, doing the juice cleanse, I've been realizing that the times where I have been feeling happier is straight after I released some kind of emotion. So whether that was uh, anger or a bit of fear or sadness, um, any of those times during the 14 days that I did do that, that's when I felt really good. And, you know, the rest of the time I was just at this normal kind of base level of happiness, let's say. I've kind of been realising that, um, you know, we can't just look at, through my own experience, we can't just look at looking to try to heal things on a physical level. Um, because everything that happens on a physical level, I've, I've been finding, is just an effect of something that we are holding on to in our hearts and so if we solely you know just do a juice cleanse to heal a certain type of condition we may have to heal um something in us like like to heal let's say if we are overweight and to drop weight you know it yes a juice cleanse may you know, help to relieve some symptoms of certain illnesses or conditions or diseases we may have and also to reduce our weight. Um, but that, that is still an effect, essentially. It's not dealing with what actually caused the illness or the condition or what caused uh, a person to be overweight in the first place. Now, for someone who's overweight, um, you know, people may think that, oh, the cause is just because they eat too much and they're lazy, you know. Um, however, what I'm saying is there must be a reason why somebody would choose to um, eat or overeat um, in the first place. You know, it's not just a case of, oh, it's because they eat too much and whatever. Um, it goes more deeper than that and it goes into actually some emotional reasons in a very core of a heart which causes that to happen um so you know that's what i've been kind of realizing that there is this relationship between cause and effect through my experience i've been finding that over the last couple of years releasing emotion that i've had in me from my childhood has increased my happiness and it has made me feel better inside of myself and I guess what I'm trying to share with everyone is just the distinction between, um, you know, actually really delving into our hearts and just addressing things on a physical level. There's been a lot of studies and a lot of videos on YouTube where people do a juice cleanse for, let's say, two weeks or they go on a raw food diet for two weeks or, you know, or a month or however long and their symptoms are gone of a certain illness, let's say, for example, diabetes, um, you know, it, it appears that the person is cured. Um, but, you know, what if that person then kind of defaulted back to, um, you know, um, a bit more of a slacker uh, diet, they didn't juice, and they kind of had a bit of cooked food, then what the chances of the, you know, symptoms of the illness or in diabetes in this example coming back. So really can we say that, you know, the actual uh, juice cleanse itself has healed the uh, condition? You can't really. The juice cleanse did um, help unlock or help me get into certain emotions that I um, have had or had within me that I, that probably wouldn't have come up um, as quickly had I not gone on the juice cleanse. Another really interesting thing that I did find actually when I was doing the juice cleanse was that um, I too have used food actually to kind of shut certain feelings down. Anyone who knows me uh, knows that I've for the last couple of years had a tendency to go to various types of nut butter is a type of substitute for um, for a meal and just for a snack type of thing. Um, and for me, that's been probably the only real type of physical food or physical thing that I go to. Um, if I'm finding something a bit tricky or challenging in my life. Um, and it's not just uh, food addiction isn't just something that happens to women. I feel like 
almost all men have it too in a, in a, in a degree as well. Um, a lot's made out about women and you know how they are affected by things and it is true women are affected for probably a number of tons of reasons uh, but also it's I feel it's the same in men it's just with men it's not really looked at or not investigated too much there's people in who live quite comfortably so you know all of us who do not need to worry about starvation and things like that you know we are relatively comfortable and we can buy food and we're lucky enough to buy food um, all of us probably do have a certain type of food that we go to to comfort us so for example if um, there was a tricky conversation that I was having with my with my girl or um, there were certain uh, triggers that I had in my environment with um, like certain money fears or you know uh, different areas of my life I did feel this urge like oh I'm hungry now I want to get some food and the good thing with the juice cleanse is that you've got nowhere to go or you've got nowhere to run in that regard you can't go to um, you know uh, chips or potatoes or whatever that you would usually go to to you know make yourself feel uh, more comfortable inside and go to comfort um, so I was kind of forced to kind of just sit there with the feeling that was coming up and the only thing that I could do is just drink some juice or drink some water um, so I found it in that regard pretty good me going to my nut butter was because I have got like um, a feeling of it's like a lack of self-love I kind of used nut butter or ate a lot of it as a replacement for a meal and that's because I kind of felt like I didn't want to make myself a, a, a proper meal um, and so it was more of like a lazy thing um, and also as well I found it, it I kind of went to it because I wanted to avoid there was some type of fear that was coming up in me and I went to the nut butter to try and shut down that feeling and control that feeling um, and so I felt I feel like the reason why I did go to that was for those two primary uh, reasons so um, so yeah it's just it was really interesting to observe that we all have a responsibility to kind of notice these things that we all do in our day-to-day -day lives and notice and think oh why did I do that why did I you know just stuff myself with tons of crisps or just had loads of like potatoes or whatever like why did I do that um, what am I trying to numb myself out of and um, and yeah I think it's a really like that's the key to actual permanent uh, healing and spiritual growth is trying to get into these emotions that we have that we all have in us whether we know that we have them or not that affects all of our life but also as well because you know I have been pretty healthy um, for a couple of years I kind of started realizing during the cleanse that I can just keep going and going and trying to get more healthy and healthier just on a physical level but my actual true happiness in my heart uh, probably would not change too significantly even if I did go just hardcore on juices for the rest of my life or um, you know did more exercise I kind of feel like there's probably a, a limit really to where you can go uh, in that regard. The times where I did feel some emotion and release some emotion I felt instantly more connected to myself and instantly more connected to my own emotions and I did feel better. I'm still feeling unhappy in a lot of areas of my life um, in my heart uh, that I've not yet healed and I'm realizing that no matter how hard I go with my diet and all these physical things not much is really going to change and I have been realizing that there is a relationship between uh, emotions we store and our happiness or what then manifest like kind of manifests in our uh, environment in our lives and I don't really like using the word manifest because it kind of feels a bit weird <laughs> um, but um, I couldn't think of a better word um, and one thing that Jesus and Mary uh, teach is that uh, God has uh, tons of laws. Uh, God's created the universe um, un 
with tons of laws and the, there's a lot of principles behind the laws um, that God's created. And one of these laws is the law of cause and effect. Um, what Jesus uh, speaks about, and, and Mary too, they both speak that um, every source of um, illness, disease, um, condition, uh, unhappiness, pain, suffering, it is all related to an emotional cause that we have in our own hearts that came from usually our childhood, uh, usually between the ages of zero to seven years old. And the reason why they say this is because while, when we were a child in that age, we are just like sponges and we just absorb everything that comes at us from our environment and from our primary caregivers. So parents or if we didn't have parents, grandparents or uh, you know primary school teachers, older siblings, um, we basically uh, received a lot of things emotionally from them and we learned certain things that we thought was love from our childhood and those primary teachers that we had in our lives. And um, we grow with these errors um, and grow into an adult with the same errors and the same um, causes within our hearts that may manifest later in life to certain illnesses and diseases. And um, Jesus and Mary shared that if we can drill down emotionally to the cause of um, why we feel in certain ways, then our physical body will instantly show and reflect the healing and reflect the change. And so we can then keep being happy in our lives. Our physical bodies will uh, reflect that to us. And, um, and that's actually the actual true way to heal and it's a permanent way it's not just a temporary way you know um, people do a juice cleanse and they find they have let's say for example really good skin during the juice cleanse and maybe a couple of weeks after that but then they find that you know if they don't keep on, on the juice cleanse then the skin starts reverting back to how it was before and you know really can we say that that's a uh, actual real way to heal um, something within ourselves? We can't really. Um, and that's the problem with just looking at things on a physical level. Also, one other thing that did come up for me uh, during the course of the juice cleanse was that um, I'll just quickly uh, mention the scenario and then I'll explain it a bit. Um, so, me and my girl, we decided to do this juice cleanse together, that we would um, do it halves and halves. So, you know, heart, you know, one of us would do the, the actual um, preparing of the fruit and veg and doing the actual juicing process itself, half the, half of the two weeks. And, you know, the other person would do it for the other half to keep it fair. Um, just because anyone who has done a juice cleanse, uh, you probably know that it's not a real quick thing, um, particularly if you have a slow uh, masticating type juicer, which we have. It usually is a couple. Uh, it's a, usually a couple of hours uh, process to prepare the fruit and veg, to put it through the juicer, and then get you know get the juice afterwards. Particularly if you're doing it for not just yourself but somebody else too. Um, and so we had that idea in mind, and we agreed on that. And uh, three days in to the juice cleanse, I got this idea that I thought was really clever at the time. And I thought, oh, if I do a couple of days starting today and tomorrow and get that in the bank, then she can, my girl can then do the, the juicing after that, you know, like the next two days and I've got a bit of time off. What actually happened after the two days where I um, did that, uh, on the third day when I had it in my mind that my girl was going to then do it for a couple of days she ended up uh, being completely bedridden uh, because of a back problem she had and so on the third day um, I, it was down to me to do more of the juicing and you know she literally couldn't get out of bed like there was no way she was ever going to be able to do it and so I was like, okay, I'll do it. And I had this feeling like, oh, I felt wounded. Like, 
ah, oh, I've been forced to do this, um, to do more juicing. And I felt a bit gutted about it. And um, I remember I was doing the juicing and I was like, what's going on here? Like, what's going on in me? Why do I feel like this? When my girlfriend literally can't do it. Um, and I was starting to realize like, oh, this is quite selfish. There's something in me that's quite selfish here. When I went to Australia on uh, the Divine Truth Volunteer Training Program, um, towards the back end of last year and early this year, uh, Jesus and Mary gave me quite a lot of in-depth feedback about um, anger and a demand that I have on a woman to do the cooking and cleaning um, predominantly. And, you know, like when I initially got that feedback, I kind of was like, oh, I didn't really want to hear it. And I'm sure anyone who's received feedback from Jesus and Mary in the past, they feel like, oh, like a bit challenged by it and they want to deny it and stuff. That's exactly what happened to me um, because I didn't want to be humble and come to terms with it, something that's actually quite unloving in me, an unloving demand I have on somebody else. I didn't want to see it and it was like, oh no, I don't want to see it. Um, but um, I started realizing like, yeah, like this is, this is my demand. Really, if I was in a place of love, it wouldn't matter if I did two two days of doing the juicing, you know, before uh, before she got a bad back, and then I'd have done it on the third day, and I'd have seen that she can't do it, and I'd feel happy that I can help her out, and you know, do uh, do more juice juice for us both on the day where she can't do it, and I know that if she loved me, which I feel she does and she doesn't have the same issue that I have with the cooking and cleaning, she would naturally want to, you know, um, do the juicing uh, and cleaning when she gets better anyway. And, you know, there was a reason in me why I was kind of counting it all up in my heart and in my mind. And, um, you know, uh, this experience along with the feedback that I got in Australia, I started, you know, I realized like, oh, this is a big problem actually. And, um, you know, I was realizing like, I do expect a woman to cook and clean for me. Like, I feel like a woman should do that. Like, I feel that's what she should do. And I realized like the reason why I've got that is because in my childhood from the age of zero to 18, when I left to go to university, my mum did all the cooking and cleaning and laundry for the whole family. And me growing up, from being a kid to when I left uh, home and throughout the course of my life up until recent, very recently, I thought that, you know, it's just normal that a woman does that. That's just a woman's role. And I wasn't seeing the truth of the situation, which was like, the truth was that, oh, I'm responsible for doing my own cooking and cleaning. Um, and also, you know, I'm responsible for looking after myself and a woman doesn't have to do it. And it took me quite a few anger temper tantrums <laughs> and whacking and screaming um, at a bed with um, just trying to let go of some of this rage that I had about the whole situation. It's part of me being responsible. And I put, I've put this stuff on my girl because my mum expected, or my mum showed me that, you know, a woman should do all of this stuff for me. And ironically enough, my dad also, uh, when I was growing up, had the same feeling. He had the feeling like, oh, a woman should cook and clean and do the laundry after me. I go out, make the money, and I should have food on the table when I get home. Um, and me growing up, I thought that was normal. You know, from both of my parents, I was taught that from both of them. And, you know, my dad, looking back now, I can see my dad has quite an arrogant viewpoint um, of a woman doing that for him. And I was like, oh, I've got the same thing. It probably wouldn't have come up so quickly if I wasn't doing the juice cleanse and I wasn't going to certain foods to, you know, shut all of that stuff down, those emotions down in me. Um, so, so yeah, I did find, um, that like a revelation really. Um, and also, um, you know, I kind of 
thought that it wasn't such a big deal before, um, but really it's a massive deal, you know, really. Um, there's a lot of pain that I have caused my girl in the past because I've had this feeling that she looked after me um, by doing the cooking and cleaning. And that's not love. Um, it's just not, it's not fair, it's not moral, it's not ethical, it's none of them things. Also during the juice cleanse, I realized that our human, our physical bodies, they really don't need uh, that much food. I feel like a lot of us probably eat more than we need to really. Um, I was kind of reflecting and realizing that I'd be really, really happy and very happy indeed to uh, just have fruit uh, for a lot of the day or a smoothie or a juice, drink water and then in the evening time or late afternoon maybe have a salad or some nuts or whatever um, that would keep me full throughout the entire day and I'd feel you know pretty healthy still um, you know and that a juice cleanse isn't really necessary um, you know, to, to be happy or to feel healthier as such. Um, it's well known already that a vegan lifestyle is the healthiest lifestyle that any of us could uh, wish to follow. And there's a lot of loving reasons as to why it is. Um, but yeah, I guess I kind of realized like, you know, a lot of the food that we eat or the excess food that we eat, it is to actually um, avoid um, emotional pain that we all have and emotional issues. And so we either use food to, as an angry thing, we go to food to, you know, like stuff ourselves with in an angry way, or we go to food to uh, numb out of our own fear or whatever. Um, but if we kind of just uh, got rid of these emotions within our hearts, we'd then probably start realizing that, yeah, we don't really need much food at all. And the only reason we would go to them, certain types of food, is to um, avoid these issues. Uh, that's something that I wouldn't have necessarily come to the conclusion before I did this 14 day juice cleanse. And uh, I guess it's like all things really. Um, you can hear people say tons of things, but it's until you experience it for yourself and go through the experience, then you learn more about whatever it is that they teach. And so people who teach about juice cleansing and about all these things that happen to them, um, you know, you can hear it, but you won't necessarily know the truth or know what happens for yourself unless you do it for yourself. And I guess that's the same approach that I'm trying to do with divine truth and growing my relationship with God in that, you know, Jesus and Mary can teach all of these principles to us all. And we can see that their lives are getting happier and they're ex experiencing a lot more happiness, but, you know, we won't, know or experience that unless we try at least to do the same things that they do and try to go through emotional uh, processing and emotional release and long for God's love, uh, which is like the most important thing in the entire process, really. There is a definite uh, reason why um, we see these physical symptoms that occur in our bodies and any illnesses, diseases, uh, conditions, uh, general pain or suffering, there is an emotional cause within our hearts and I am seeing that to be true now. Uh, whereas before I kind of heard it but it didn't really fully uh, enter my heart. Whereas now I'm seeing that no, to be happier truly, like permanently, um, we have to go through these emotions. We can't avoid them. We have to go through them. Overall, the, the juice cleanse was effective for me in terms of the goals I had in the intentions that I had uh, going into the cleanse to see if it would unlock emotions. That definitely happened for both myself and my girl, for sure. Um, and so in that regard, it was really, uh, really beneficial and I'm glad I did it. 
Um, but I do want to say as well that if you're kind of going into a juice cleanse in the hope that it will just solve all your problems and any physical illnesses or, you know, overweight issues that you have or underweight issues that you have, um, it's not a blanket heal thing and we have to kind of question that if we do feel better, is it just a temporary thing or are these symptoms just temporarily gone because of the juice cleanse and might they come back later on? That leads me on to the final thing that I want to share and that is um, like I do gen genuinely feel that um, you know a lot of people are wanting to find the truth and are wanting to become better people and better um, humans and to look after the environment better like I do genuinely feel that's true and a lot of people um, also do um, you know advocate well recommend a raw uh, vegan lifestyle or a vegan lifestyle or a juicing lifestyle uh, they are really good and I'm not saying that they're not good because they really are I'm a vegan myself I've been a vegan for three and a half years um, I've benefited greatly uh, from uh, being on a vegan diet and it is definitely the way to go but I'm just saying that you know for true health and happiness um, it is the key I feel is the emotional release of emotions we have locked up inside of ourselves um, so that is um, you know something to I feel bear in mind um, if you do want to do a juice cleanse and uh, and yeah um, that's just what I like to finish with so I just like to thank everybody for listening if you listen the whole way I'd also like to thank um, more than anything Jesus and Mary for doing what they're doing with uh, teaching divine truth to the world whether people listen or not it's really helped me so much um, in so many areas of my life and also other people who are uh, acting to uh, share divine truth with the world um, for me personally it's the thing that I'm most passionate about uh, I feel all of us on the planet have got such a brilliant opportunity to know the truth, to actually know it from people who have lived it uh, for 2,000 years and you know they know this all and if we are just more open and can listen to what they uh, share to us all uh, we could make a lot of changes that would benefit not just ourselves but other people and the environment that we live in. Yeah I'd just like to um, definitely you know recommend people who haven't heard of Divine Truth before to kind of uh, explore it if you've got an interest in it and to see um, to kind of make your own conclusions from there um, but yeah um, I'd just like to leave you all with that final note and uh, say bye so see you guys